One Life to Live is a groundbreaking television series that started in 1968. It's known for its exciting blend of drama, romance, and unexpected twists. The show has given us countless memorable moments, from heartwarming connections to jaw-dropping revelations. As we dive into the world of Landview, you'll discover many funny, shocking, and sad facts that will keep you glued to your screen. Now, let's get personal. Was there a scene or moment in one life to live that left a mark on you? Maybe it was a touching reunion or a betrayal that you didn't see coming. And what about those hidden gems, the lesser known facts or behind the scenes stories that add depth to the show? We're curious to hear about your most treasured memory or experience with one life to live. Your stories and memories are important to us, so please share them in the comments below. Let's celebrate this series together and keep its legacy alive through our shared connections. One Life to Live has captivated audiences since its inception, initially airing in 30-minute episodes. The residents of Landview have become beloved figures, portrayed with a blend of emotion, humor, and authenticity that has resonated with viewers. The cancellation of the show by ABC came as a surprise to many, considering its quality writing, engaging storylines, and exceptional performances that arguably rank it among the best television has to offer. The dedication of soap opera actors is unparalleled, often going unrecognized despite their tireless efforts. The absence of this series will leave a void for its loyal fan base, who have spent years following the lives of Vicki, Lord Buchanan, Jessica, Natalie Starr, Todd Blair T., John McBain, Bo Buchanan, and David Vickers Buchanan. The departure of Dorian, played by Robin Strasser, marked the beginning of the end for this cherished series. In contrast to the cost-effective production of reality television, which has grown in popularity, the rich storytelling of One Life to Live represents a form of entertainment that will be deeply missed by those who appreciate the art of scripted drama. In a dramatic courtroom scene that has stood the test of time, the episode titled Karen Takes the Stand showcased a performance that earned Judith Light the Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress. This particular episode is often cited as a significant moment in television history. Adding to the narrative of the show, the characters of John Kramer Manning and star Irene Manning are central to the storyline, with their full names symbolizing their deep connections within the series' intricate family dynamics. In the landscape of daytime television, a notable actor, Al Freeman Jr., took on a role that Sidney Poitier originally brought to life. Freeman starred in Look to the Lilies, the musical adaptation of Lilies of the Field, alongside Shirley Booth in 1970. Despite the star power, the show saw a brief run of only 25 performances. Transitioning to the structure of daytime dramas, the show in question, along with General Hospital, began as 30-minute episodes. In a strategic move in 1977, ABC extended their duration to 45 minutes, aiming to retain viewers and reduce production costs compared to hour-long episodes. However, this led to an unintended outcome, with audiences switching channels earlier than anticipated, prompting the network to switch to a full-hour format within a year. Casting decisions also played a pivotal role in shaping characters. The character Kelly Kramer was initially envisioned as a woman in her late 20s. Alexandra Wilson, known for her work on Another World, was considered for the role but declined the offer. This led to a significant rewrite of the character, who was then portrayed as a teenager by Gina Tignoni, marking a shift in the character's narrative trajectory. In a unique turn of events, actor Thorsten Kaye took on a new role as Ian Thornhart, the twin of his previous character in the series Port Charles. This transition occurred after he left his role as Patrick Thornhart. Additionally, the show found a new home in Manhattan at 320 West 66th Street, the former studio of All My Children, following the latter's relocation to Los Angeles in 2010. Interestingly, the show was initially titled Between Heaven and Hell before it became known by its more familiar name. In the landscape of daytime television, certain figures stand out for their achievements and unique stories. Taya Marissa Delgado is one such character, known not just by her first name, but by her full identity that resonates with fans. Another notable figure is Erica Slezak, whose portrayal of Victoria Davidson earned her a record-breaking six Daytime Emmy Awards, a testament to her skill and the character's appeal. L. Freeman Jr.'s contribution to television also deserves mention. Although he was set to appear as Red Salter in Cool Red, circumstances led to Greg Morris taking over the role, showcasing the unpredictable nature of the industry. Amid the twists and turns of fictional lives, certain details remain elusive, such as the full name of the character star, which, despite rumors, was never confirmed on screen. 
The show holds the distinction of being the final American daytime drama to conclude its production in New York City. Adding to its legacy, a unique book was released, offering fans a glimpse into the romantic musings and cherished poems of the character Patrick Thornhart, along with an audio experience of these readings, bringing the character's voice directly to the audience. This addition to the show's narrative allowed viewers a deeper connection with the character's inner world. In a bold move, the creative team behind a popular daytime drama scrapped an entire storyline involving a high school hostage crisis. This decision came in the wake of a real-life tragedy, reflecting the show's sensitivity to national events. The narrative, which was to span 17 episodes, underwent a complete overhaul. In another instance, authenticity was brought to the screen with the use of real well drilling equipment and personnel for a dramatic rescue from an underground city. This not only added realism to the scenes, but also marked a unique moment in the show's history. Additionally, a personal touch was evident in the affectionate nickname Shorty, given by a father to his daughter, showcasing the tender family dynamics amidst the dramatic plots. Reflecting on his time as Joey Buchanan, Nathan Fillion once quipped about the essence of his performance, highlighting the unique nature of his role. In 1988, the show broke new ground with the construction of the Great Hall of Eterna, a set so expansive it required its own studio space, setting a record for daytime dramas. Additionally, the character Hope Manning Thornhart carries a name that connects her to two prominent families, showcasing the intertwined relationships that are a hallmark of the series. Al Freeman Jr. was recognized with an NAACP Image Award for his portrayal of Malcolm X's mentor in the 1992 film by Spike Lee. In the soap opera landscape, Thomas Todd Manning stands as a notable character. The casting history of the show is marked by a significant event involving Robin Strasser. She was a part of a highly followed love triangle storyline on Another World with actors George Reinhold and Jacqueline Courtney. Following their dismissal from Another World due to off-screen politics, Reinhold and Courtney were recruited by producers to join the cast, taking on the roles of Tony Lord and Pat Ashley, respectively. They were positioned in a new love triangle with Kathy Craig, a role that producers hoped Strasser would fill to replicate the trio's previous success. However, Strasser declined the offer, choosing not to replace another actress. It wasn't until 1979 that she joined the show as Dorian, by which time Reinhold had already departed. In the fictional town of Landview, the streets and landmarks viewers see are actually based on the central city area of Philadelphia. When Blair Kramer first appeared, she was played by Mia Korf, who is of Japanese and Caucasian heritage from October 1991 to January 1993. This initial portrayal included references to her Asian background. However, when Cassie Wesley DePeva took over the role, these cultural elements were no longer highlighted. On a personal note, Judith Light found love on the set, meeting Robert Desiderio, and they have maintained their marriage ever since.